what we want to show you is kind of what we do as far as how we get the gold um, out of something other than a river and that means a tunnel site and what we have is we've got a mine shaft um, that we've had for a number of years and we go in and we actually I guess for lack of a better term we blow up the rock inside the tunnel and keep tunneling and chasing this vein um, and then we bring out that rock and then we crush it down into smaller pieces and then we run it through an impact mill which turns it into powder and then typically we'll process that and get the gold that way. This is a portable unit that Don built, um, that Don and John Nulling built that um, it works pretty good. It's on a trailer so we can go out to another mine and just sample. We can go in with rock hammers and just chisel out chunks out of the wall and then run that and then we'll pan that stuff out and see what we get. This stuff here is actually from my mine um, and it's really, really good material. So let me, let me start and tell you about, um, I'll kind of give you your, your Reader's Digest Geology 101 lesson for the day, is we have a lot of earthquakes in California, right? Do you know why that is? Anybody? Plates. Is you've got plates moving underneath, and it's called the Pacific Plate. Where we're standing here in Sonora is what, 2,600 feet in elevation? At one point, this land was a lot lower. And what's happening is the Pacific Plate is pushing underneath the Sierra Nevadas, and it's causing it to buckle, and that creates earthquakes. And it's also making the mountains grow. So the mountains in Yosemite, the mountains over here on the passes, are all growing by you know maybe a millimeter or an inch a year, or whatever it is. And over the course of millions of years, you end up with like mountains like the Rockies. Well, if you think about that stuff being flat, there was all these sedimentary layers of rock, whether it be granite and, and, and uh, shale and schist and you know marble and all these other ones, they're just stacked up on top of each other. So as you start to push those up with the plates, they start to come at an angle. All of the rock, if you went inside my load mine, you'll see there's the quartz vein here and it meets up this other side. It's 47 degree slope. That's how much has been pushed up from a flat surface. Now it's 47 degrees. Does that make sense? So what happens is that creates cracks in all of those sedimentary layers of rock. And then when you have geothermal activity in Earth, um, the quartz becomes liquefied. It's just like liquid glass. That, And I don't know why gold and quartz are so attached. Some other geologists could tell you <laughs> that. But that gets superheated. And then when you have geothermal activity, that liquid quartz gets pushed up and it gets wedged between all those cracks of the other sedimentary layers of rock and as that starts to cool when it comes up the gold carries through that liquid quartz and then it settles either on the foot or on the ceiling of that vein and i want to use this rock here as an example hopefully you guys can see this this is the best example that i can give you of what we're actually mining. This stuff right here is called porphyry and it feels like soapstone. If you run your hand on this, it actually feels like a bar of soap. It's real kind of slimy. Where this quartz vein that was superheated came up carrying gold, where it meets this, you can see how red and dark this is along through here. That's highly mineralized. It's got a lot of iron and it has a lot of gold. We try to mine just this two inches. Um, although when we blow up the rock and do all that kind of stuff and take it out of the load mine, um, you end up with a lot more. This right here runs about three ounces of gold per ton. So when we get our operation fully going and we're using the backhoe and we're blasting stuff with the Sierra Blaster, um, which we're gonna show you in a second, we can run about 10 tons a day. You can do the math on that. If you're getting an ounce of gold per ton, you run 10 tons, the problem is, is you always have equipment breakdowns. Don has always got some little thing that he's got to do for his family. <laughs> <laughs> never ridiculous, so. <laughs> but anyway, you can make a lot of money, but it is extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, you know, a lot of people die in load mines because they don't uh, make sure that they're safe. So I don't encourage anybody to go into a mine if they've never been in one without knowing what you're doing. We go in every single time into our mine and we do what's called barring it down. We walk in with these long bars 
and we hit every single rock to make sure that it's not loose. If it is, we knock it down. If we have to, we'll build timbers and we'll shore up the mine. Um, but that's basically uh, what we have in, in our mine is we have one giant vein of quartz and, and most all of the gold is on what we call the ceiling. So if you've got a, a vein of quartz like this, as that was coming up, all the gold went to the top. You would think it would be at the bottom, but it actually is up at the top contact zone. So what we focus on is trying to remove that two inches where it meets the porphyry, and we just keep chasing that down. 47 degrees, we keep going down. We've got actually a 180 foot long um, main shaft, it's called an adit, that goes in, and then we have a stope that comes down, and that provides us with complete ventilation. The only problem is, last time we went out there, it obviously has now become a home for a bobcat. Because when we pulled up, the bobcat ran out of the mine. So you've got to be aware of things like that. I brought in my 200-pound dogs, and I don't think that the bobcat's going to be back. But anyway, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to actually crush this, and we're going to fire this this little beast up. But we've got uh, this gentleman in the funny-looking hat in the green shirt here. Um, is Aaron, and he invented a new product called the Sierra Blaster. Um, and it's something that we at American Mining Rights, we don't in get paid by these guys, we don't really... If something works because we're professional miners, we tell you about it. If it doesn't work, unfortunately for them, we also tell you that. <laughs> this is such a cool product that I actually bought one, and they're, they're not cheap, it's a couple of grand for the one that I bought. But what it allows you to do is we can go into our load mine and instead of using dynamite and doing things that are really dangerous, if you go in and you set some charges with dynamite and you set it off, and Ken knows this, he's a hard rock miner here, is you end up with an enormous amount of material and it shatters everything and it's really hard to, now you have to run everything. So instead of running stuff that's three ounces per ton, when you get done running everything, you're running 10 tons to get an ounce. And so it's really hard on your equipment because the impact mill that I have at my shop, uh, it's got 16 hammers that are about that thick, tool steel and about that wide, and they're lined up in this giant drum and it spins at 3,500 RPM. When you drop a rock in there, it literally just explodes into powder. And I mean powder like you would bake a cake, that kind of flour stuff. And then um, we process that and get the gold. But the whole key is to try to use something that, instead of blowing up the whole mountain and running all of that, you're isolating out just what you want to get. And that's what this piece of equipment does. So what you're doing is instead of drilling great big holes, and you guys have probably seen on TV, they got those those air hammers and you see those guys in there and it's blasted water and all that. Now all we're drilling is a 10 millimeter hole and you're sticking a steel rod with a 375 cartridge on there and you're just blast, you're popping it with a, uh, basically with a battery. You're sending a 12 volt charge to it. So anyway, we're gonna have Aaron kind of show you. So these two rocks over here, guys, how close do you want them, Aaron? Talking about things and drilling, they could be right there, but when we go off, I'll everybody just them up. Okay, well, let's go do that, and then we'll crush this stuff up, we'll pan it out, and we'll give everybody an ounce of gold that came today. After I drill, I'll do some more explaining. is he's going to take one of these little 375 cartridges All right, right so here. Luckily for us, we don't actually need it. And then this has got two wires on it. And uh, this goes on the end of that steel head, goes down in there, and uh, basically the wires are going to connect to this other wiring, and then he's just going to pop it. So. All that cartridge does is because it's so tightly contained in that hole, it has nowhere to go with the steel rod sitting on top of it, so it cracks the rock, and the rock just falls into two pieces. It doesn't blow it up and you know send rocks that takes out Don's truck 
like you would normally do with dynamite or an explosive charge. The coolest part about this, guys, you don't need a permit. You don't need licensing. You don't need all that crap. It's perfectly legal. And we have found, we actually took these guys into our mine shaft um, to see how well it would do in drilling through quartz and things like that. Uh, we got a video on our on our webpage of doing that, but it worked awesome. And so this is really what we use now for load mining in our load mine. It's a lot safer. <laughs> you get to go home at night, you know. Okay, I didn't bring my air pump, so I'm gonna use the. All with one little tiny cartridge because it's so self-contained in that hole that you don't need to blow it up. You could have done this without the blast blanket on it and the rocks would probably still be in the same area. Yeah. Now, what's really cool about this is, and we've taken this in on our placer mine as well, um, to where you'll have a rock half the size of my big Toyota truck over there and drill two or three holes in it. And I mean a rock from me to, to this guy here in the red amber hat and literally split it into four pieces with two of these heads. So, the, I mean, they're, I don't know, the head, the blasting, uh, the little caps are like, I don't know, 50 cents, 75 cents, whatever a piece. So you don't have any expense. You don't have the permitting. You don't have to do the NOI, the plan of operations through the Forest Service, all this kind of stuff. So it's really pretty handy. Speaking of the Forest Service, hey Jim. So anyway, let's uh, let's go crush some of this load material and we'll show you how we do that. Real quick, make them smaller rocks. Um, the big operation that we have at my shop will take a rock that size and it'll crush it down into what we call quarter minus. The way that we've got the plate set up and we typically set up a jaw crusher to, to chomp is kind of like just a dog biting about 180 to 240 times a minute and just chomp, 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 chomp. And that'll crush this down into smaller gravel to a quarter inch or smaller. Then that goes into the impact mill, which turns it into powder. I'm going to shut this down because you don't want to breathe a lot of this stuff. You can get silicosis and it's just not a good thing. But if everybody can come around here, I want to show you what, what's coming out of here. As you can start to see, it's been crushed fairly well. Um, you know, for a test machine, that's not too bad. Um, it's still pretty big, but there is a lot of super fine stuff in here. But you got to remember, a machine like this, you're only using to go out and just actually sample and test. So we're not trying to get rich off of using this, but for the sake of demonstrating for you guys, at least you can kind of see what that's like. So. Mm -hmm. 